how did I end up as an immigrant in Canada? Come along with me and learn the story. Hello, adventure seekers. I'm excited to share my own immigrant journey and how I ended up in Canada. Before we dive deeper into the issues, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Irene. I've been living as an immigrant for close to two decades. That's why I'm here to take you on some sort of a roller coaster ride where I'll introduce you to my immigrant journey, to the good and the not so good experience. Because we are on a journey, I would like to start from the beginning. I was born and raised in a rural village in Kenya before I left for the city to pursue my university education. And ever since, I've never stopped traveling the world. After I graduated from university with a bachelor's in sociology and anthropology, and also a postgraduate diploma in mass communication, I mostly worked in the non-profit sector, working and learning with local communities, with learning and training institutions, and with policymakers on issues to do with natural resource management. So before I arrived in Canada, my job, my work endeavors had um, enabled me to travel the world. I traveled to more than 20 countries in um, five continents of the world. The places I traveled to included the USA. Actually, I traveled three times to the USA and back to Kenya. And at that time in the 90s, everybody Many people kept on asking me, especially the young people, why I kept returning from the USA, yet I had a long-term visa. I did not have an explanation, but it was because I had not found something to like in the USA compared to the type of life that um, I had in Kenya. However, in the late 90s, I traveled. My work took me to Canada. That was in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. And uh, something clicked. I don't know what it was. It was, um, I think, March towards the end of winter because there was still some snow on the ground. But something clicked. I was like, I would love, I would like to live in this place. So I traveled back to, to Kenya. But the idea, the image stuck in my mind. I guess you know what happens once you like something and you want something. So when I traveled back, I mentioned to some of my friends that um, I would like to go and spend more time in Canada. So in the early 2000s, one of my workmates, a friend, mentioned to me that um, there was uh, an immigration agent from Canada who was in town. And can we go and talk to the person since... I'm interested in um, settling down in Canada, and she was also interested in doing that. So that is the beginning of my story or of my journey. After chatting with the immigration agent, I realized that the application process was going to need a lot of my time. There was a lot of paperwork and documents to be, to be sourced. Put together. So what did I do? I paid the agent so that they did all the paperwork. My task was just to give them the documents that they asked for. And there were, there were a lot of documents from birth certificates, passports to educational certificates, letters from employer, police certificates, documents to show the assets that we owned, bank statements, but it was easy in that my job was just to go and get the document and they did the rest. Yeah, they did the rest of the work and that set me free to continue doing the job that I enjoyed to do, which was working and learning with the local communities. These are communities who depended on um, natural resources to provide for a livelihood. 2022 came around, I saw a job advert for a conflict management advisor, which was going to take me out of town, and I applied and I got the job. It was a job with an international development agency. I applied, moved out of town, because for me this time I'd um, forgotten about the application to Canada because once the agent stopped asking me for documents or once I'd 
given the needed documents. It's like the task got out of my mind and I was able to focus on my job, my career. So I moved out of town, which was a big promotion, getting the new job. I went to work still in the area of natural resource management, but this time on conflict management and peace building in the Karamoja cluster. That's a conflict area in terms of um, different pastoralists or livestock people, depending on a limited natural resource. And this natural resource is uh, pastures for their um, livestock. So they tend to get into seasonal conflict. That's where I went to work and I was enjoying doing the work because uh, partly because I could see the result, you know, like getting people from conflicting communities into one room was a big achievement because um, in some of the areas where we worked, you could find that people from these two different communities, because they had a conflict, they could not sit together to discuss that. So for me, I was seeing achievements in small bits, but they were big achievements in that once people agree or start to talk, then it means that you can bring in the next idea and the next idea and there will be progress. We kept on now seeing communities starting to have relationships where maybe this community has this product. They started trading with the next uh, community. So I can say I was enjoying my life because um, if you're enjoying what you do, that's your job, you're seeing results, you're being paid well enough to, you know, provide for comforts that you would like in your life. I could say doing this job of uh, or as a conflict management advisor was the climax in my life. Before now I got, I started sliding down on the other side of the hill. And how did it start? It was with a phone call from our immigration agent. July of 2004, I was in Uganda on a work trip and one evening the agent calls and says, your application has gone through, now you need to travel to Canada next month. This was July, so it was like we needed to travel in August. I was on a work mission, travel, doing the job that I loved very much. Being asked to pack my life, my entire life, within one month and move to Canada, I thought of that and I was like, no, no. So I asked for more time and the agent said, you can get more time, but you will have to go for a second medical exam. And I was like, that's okay. Back to Kenya, the emotional side of my journey started. There were so many questions dashing through my mind. How will I stop doing the work that I love and the communities with whom I'd already created a working rela- relationship. How was I going to tell my employer that I'm leaving? I'm leaving this job that I loved. How was I going to leave behind my extended family? Because we had a close relationship. Was I going to travel to Canada before my mom returned home? Because at that time she had traveled to the USA to visit with family. What was I going to pack and what was I going to leave behind? And if I was going to leave things behind, with whom was I going to leave the things? Was I going to pack and store the items or was I going to give them away because we are now going to Canada? These were the stories that were rushing through my mind and there was also the other piece of going to Canada. It's like, okay, when we arrive, Where are we going to stay? And what type of jobs are we going to look for? Even though during the application process, we had been assured that there were so many jobs waiting for us in Canada. So with that, there was still this concern of if there are so many openings, vacancies, how are we going to choose? How will I choose what type of job to do? And, you know, there were these questions of will they have... um, similar jobs, like the ones that I've been doing, working with the communities on issues of natural resource management. So emotions were building, mine and I guess from the family members, as I packed 
bed and farewell and left for the unknown, hoping against all hope that this place that I had chosen to go to, Canada would be a fantastic place. Most of the tension, the emotional tension and the tiredness started to win as we boarded the Emirates flight as I watched my children enjoying watching videos on the screen. So we traveled to Dubai, changed over to another Emirates, traveled to London, changed over from Emirates to Air Canada, which flew us all the way to Toronto. We arrived and felt very welcome by the immigration officers who helped us fill in the paperwork because we arrived on the 11th of January 2005. Yes, yes, we were crazy arriving in the middle of winter and we arrived a day before our visa expired because um, the way the visas used to be given was that you get a visa, you arrive and convert it to a PR or a permanent residence on arrival. So we arrived a day before. Yes, we were crazy because we were trying to be home on all the days before moving to this new place called uh, Canada. So we arrived, we had um, packed all our life into eight suitcases and some heavy carry-on bags and we started a life which is now my story. So if you if you are an immigrant or if you've ever moved from the place you call home to go and start life in a new area, how did you pack? What did you leave behind? And how did you decide on what you would take along with you or what you are going to leave behind? Please comment below and let us know because one day I'm going to tell you the bigger story on how I packed, what I left behind and what I decided to carry. It's a whole story on its own because um, packing your whole life, your children's whole life in terms of what they own and they loved into like two suitcases per person and the suitcases had to be a certain weight. So please comment below and let us know how you did that. So except for the emotional part, I cannot really say that my transition from Kenya to Canada was a big challenge, especially when I know that there are some people who immigrate to Canada because of uh, bigger challenges, because there's something pushing them out of their home country. Then I can say that um, ours was not a big challenge. I think my challenges started once I arrived in Canada, like the bigger challenges, because um, before we moved over, we had been promised that there were a lot of um, jobs in Canada. So for me, I thought that on arrival, you know, we arrived, registered children in school. I thought the next day would be told something like, now you can come and choose the type of job you would like to do, you know, from this big list. Life started. We were told we needed to convert our CVs into resumes. So we asked people around and we were directed to an institution that helps like immigrants settle down. And on arrival there, we realized or we discovered that we had to go through a three month program which prepared us for life in Canada. So that's how my job search started. And almost 20 years later, it has never stopped. For immigrants, this ends up affecting your whole like lifestyle because um, if you are busy working to earn to be able to put food on the table, it means that you don't have enough time to go out there and make new friends or even to stay in touch with the friends and family that you, you left back home. So it's like your life changes and without um, friendships and community around you, it means that you don't have um, a support system. Yet when people move to a new place, a new environment, what they need most is a community, friendship, a support system. Yet you don't have time and the, the new, the other immigrants also are busy working, so they don't have um, 
time to come together and socialize and even share information about um, jobs and where you can get them. But all these are stories for another time. But if you have an experience which you feel that you don't want to wait, you don't need to wait, please share that below. So you are welcome to come in as a guest for an interview to share your story and also open up the discussion about um, people leaving the place they call home and now starting to search for ways to make their new environment their new home. So share below, stay connected. And the best way for you to stay connected, to stay updated is to subscribe below. So click the subscribe button, like this video so that that way you're among the first people to be notified when we publish our next episode. And in the next episode, I'll continue with my story. Click here, up somewhere here to watch on how I managed to pack the whole of our household into eight suitcases. So click here and continue to watch to follow my journey as I go overseas. Until the next episode, it's a goodbye from me. And for now, go and continue with the adventure. Life is an adventure. Embrace it and enjoy it. Bye-bye.